Hey smokers, Draga1 here, and today we're going to be installing, well, the closest thing we can get to an SSD into a second generation iPod. So it's obviously not really an SSD we can put in there, um, but we can get the next best thing. I'm going to be putting a 128 gigabyte SD card into this using the Ultimate Compact Flash Adapter. And while we're in there, as you can see, I've already opened it to get right to the chase here. This old battery, eh, you can still see the indentation, the hard disk left in it. So that's not really a good battery anymore. It can't even charge up the device. So, got a new one. So let's go ahead and get started. This is probably the easiest kind of repair you can do. These older iPods are really, really easy to work on. So as you can see, this iPod is 20 gigabytes. Well, obviously, we're going to be increasing that by 100. Hopefully, it can handle it. So this is uh, actual hard disk here. I've already connect disconnected the um, compact flash cable there. And so this is the actual drive in question. Now, you can see here, shows you that it is, a, in fact, a 20 gigabyte hard drive. It actually shows its power draw right there, 500 milliamps. Now, the battery I have here is a 2000 milliamp battery. This battery is a little bit less. I think it's like 1800, the one that was actually in it. Can't really remember, but it doesn't really matter because I don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference. What may actually make a difference is the power draw of this, and this is gonna be a lot more, or a lot less, sorry, than this. Even though this is an active um, flash card, it can't really go to sleep, it's just constantly on. Um, don't really know too much about how that works. But even with that, it's still going to use up less power than the mechanical drive, which needs to spin up and all that crap. So now we have uh, basically the 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 uh, the vibration, anti-vibration sort of rubber stuff here, both here, it's supposed to go like that, and here, and it also insulates the iPod, what, logic board, I guess? And that's where all your fun stuff goes on right there. So first step, and probably a little bit awkward step, we need to open this. And the reason I call it awkward is because this is not going to be the same um, dimensions as the hard disk. There's going to be some wiggle room in there, so we'll probably have to jam some, I don't know, watered up paper towels in there or something. So this is our compact flash adapter card. And there is one difference, and we may actually have to modify the iPod to make it work. Take a look at this. See those two holes? It's sort of a guideline for how to plug it in. And uh, I sort of wish I had that kind of guideline because holy crap, I don't know if that's gonna fit in. Because where those holes are, there are also posts. So the posts won't easily plug in there without me cutting them off. And yes, I'm gonna have to cut it off. That's great. So potentially I could be in for some trouble if it turns out that I don't plug the pins in there right. Now either way, these posts are gonna have to come off. So I'm gonna have to lop them off, I guess. So I am a little bit concerned that they hold some functionality beyond just, well, that was easy. Uh, well, it doesn't appear to be any kind of electronics in it. I mean, that should be pretty obvious to pretty much everyone, but you know, I worry about doing things you can't undo. You know, once I cut this, I can't get another one of these. I'm noticing I'm slurring some words lately. Sorry about that. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, this part's pretty dang simple. Put your SD card in there. Clicks in. There, now it's in. Okay. So now, I'm gonna plug this in right here. Now the pins are shifted over a little bit. There's actually six pins that don't actually end up getting used. Take a look. You can see the pins farthest to the right, there's six of them, or holes rather, they don't get used. And there you go. So this should run without a battery. Um, 
But at this point, the iPod will probably need to get restored because all of its software is over here. Does Apple still host the restore images for this iPod? Sure as hell hope they do. So let's go find out, I guess. Here's another Power Mac G5 I have. We'll have to use an old computer for, you know, old iPod. Here's our firewire cable. And here's our iPod. So the only way to power it up right now, since it doesn't have a battery yet, is to just plug it in right there. It may not power up because it doesn't have a battery, so I might have to plug that in first. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that's not happy. So, um, let's unplug this. It may need to charge the battery a little bit before it'll work. So let's go back. Okay. So this is our battery. You can still buy old iPod batteries, believe it or not. As you can see, it comes with two spudgers. Now these are these are one-time use, I believe they're like nylon spudgers. They're supposed to pop the case of the iPod apart uh, so that it doesn't um, nick up the plastic or whatever this is on the side. Now, I opened mine with a Swiss Army knife and I mean, I'm sure you're gonna see a little bit of damage, but I don't really see any. Or even if there is, and I'm not seeing it, I don't really care. Because this is like an old beater iPod, and portable devices should be able to take a little bit of a beating. And this one, after we're done, will be able to take even more, because it's gonna be solid state. So let's see if this is punctured or ruptured at all. Doesn't appear to be. As you can see, replacement for iPod first and second generation, 2200 milliamps. So supposedly this is better than the original. Hopefully it's not too thick, but even if it is, I don't care because we have a smaller drive in there. So old battery, new battery, they look about the same. Pretty much the same dimensions. So I'm not going to have a fitting problem there. Now, the only thing we have to worry about is polarity. This previously went here, the old battery went in here, like, probably like this, so the red wire is down. This didn't come with any instructions. Read instructions before using the battery. Right in the box. No. Maybe they're on the order invoice. They're not on the order invoice, and they didn't come in the packaging, so I'm sort of screwed. Luckily, though, I took a picture of what it looked like while the battery was still plugged in, so I can tell which way it'll plug in. Now, I'm pretty sure they these connectors only plug in one way, but in the event that it doesn't, I don't want to plug it in and have it fry. So let's take a look. So here's a picture I took, and you can't really tell colors because of how it's showing up, but the red wire is up. So it does need to go that way. So basically how it's gonna look is we're gonna put it right there. We got a lot more slack on this wire than I thought we were gonna have. And yeesh, this is delicate shit right here. Yeah, see the shape of the port? It really looks like it only goes one way. See the teeth there? They're closer this way. So those need to be there, and that does confirm my theory that polarity-wise, the red needs to be up. So, look how easy this is. And the battery's installed. The iPod may actually be starting up now. It's not, but it might be a dead battery. I hope it isn't. But this is technically a complete iPod now. So yeah, I mean... I'm, I'm sort of a dumbass when it comes to these sort of things. I can't take apart small stuff like this. And yet, look how easy it was to take apart. I mean, I used... I mean, you don't even really need these. Obviously, if you're going to be buying a battery to replace it, it's going to come with these. So just wait for the battery to get here before you crack the thing open. You probably can just... It will probably be a lot easier for you to use the provided tools. But again, you can really only use these once because then they kind of destroy themselves, I'm told. I'm not going to try it myself. I'm going to save these just in case for later. 
So th again, this is a, a really easy iPod to take apart, unlike the iPod Classic, which is an absolute nightmare. And you use, have to use big, like, uh, putty knives and stuff. It's gross. So let's try and plug this into the Power Mac G5 and see what it does. Now, I may have to plug this into a newer machine, but this was back when iPods were designed to only be used with Macs. Hence the FireWire-only connector here for communication and charging. Do you still not like the battery? Maybe it needs to charge for a little bit? I definitely plugged it in and it fit. Is the battery exploding? No. I can't plug it in any other way. That's the hold switch right there. If we unplug it again... It can still display things on the screen. So it's able to independently operate at least a little bit. So I wager we just need to let it charge a little bit. So I'll plug it back in and let it do just that. Now to keep an eye on it, of course, let's launch up iTunes on the G5. Now we're running Leopard on this thing. It's going to be a much older version of iTunes that'll hopefully be a little bit more friendly with the iPod. Now regardless, it's still going to need to download the software uh, update for it. So hopefully this older version can still download it. If not, I'll have to move over to the Mac Pro to see if that'll work some magic. And if that doesn't work, I'll need to plug this thing into the XServe to get the latest version of iTunes to get it working. Hopefully we don't need to do that. As it stands right now, we're not detecting any iPods connected whatsoever. This is still doing its thing. So let's wait for it to charge a little bit, I guess. So I was letting it charge for just a little bit, and that is hot to the touch right there. Um, it looks like it was getting very, very hot with that new battery. So I don't know if that new battery is bad or what's going on, but I'm going to plug the old battery back in. Won't do anything. Nope, because that battery is totally dead. But let's plug it in, though. Hmm, it's doing the same thing. You can see this Texas Instrument chip here. It started to melt away. Ow. It started to melt away this a little bit, and you can see some residue on that. So... Ooh, ow. So, yeah, this thing is getting really hot. It's still plugged in, as you can see, and it's having a bitch fit. So let's unplug it again, and... Let's put the old hard drive back in to see if that'll do anything. Hmm, that's interesting. I plugged the compact flash card in the other way, and now we have a solid Apple logo. Harder! I put it upside down, and it fucked the whole iPod up. So it may actually have a some difficulty starting. Oh god. This is getting toasty. God damn. Hopefully I wasn't frying the actual flash adapter because that could be a problem. Nothing coming up in iTunes. I probably fucked it up. That's that's really fucking hot. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool down. <laughs> so it's label side up apparently. That's really hot. That'd be a lot of gigs to lose if this thing died. Okay. So first and foremost, put this in the right way. I'm gonna let those, those components go to cool down. So can this iPod plug in without a disk drive and without a battery? Let's hold the reset buttons. Ah, there's something different. A folder. See if we can get it to come up again. So there it is. So that sort of shows that it's at least sort of functional. It can detect that it can't find its Mac OS 9 system folder. <laughs> so, and obviously we don't have one here. And it should do that. And it should do that even... Okay. It's looking for the disk and it can't find it. Interesting little error messages, and there's our sad iPod, because obviously it can't function at this point. Now, a sad iPod doesn't mean that it'll just stop working altogether, but, I mean, once you have something that looks like this, it's gonna get pretty sad. So let's put, while we're waiting for that stuff to cool down, let's plug the old drive back in there. Back to mechanical drive land. 
You can hear it spinning up. Oh! We almost got somewhere. Well, that's an uh, improvement. And there it is! Alright, and so it detects that it's 18 gigs. So the actual, uh, the actual iPod itself, uh, its logic board, or whatever you want to say, still works. It uh, retained the fact that it's Draga's iPod, but that's probably stored on the drive itself. So, at this point, we have to sort of decide whether or not... This, this is much cooler now, by the way. Uh, as is this. We're going to need to decide whether or not this still works. Now, one way to find out is to use the Compact Flash uh, IDE adapter and plug this into it. Because I don't really have anything Compact Flash that can read this. Hold on, that's not true. SSD Linux machine! There's our beauty. Get back in there. Oh, crap. See, as you can see, this has a Compact Flash card slot. See the grooves? I guess that's all you do. I've never used one of these before at all. It's just I've never actually had anything that I needed to plug into it. So let's fire this baby up and see if we can see anything come up. So let's switch over to that. Oh, I still have the Weed OS disc in there, damn it! So let's take a look and see if we can find something here. Okay, so, um... The SD card reader on the front of the computer isn't actually plugged into the motherboard, so I'll have to fix that. Let's play Find the Header! This week, we'll be finding out where this shit goes on the motherboard, and I think it goes right here. Why was it unplugged? I don't know. Now, make sure you don't plug something in where it's not supposed to be, or your motherboard will be fried. We should be good now. First time I'm going to test if the actual SD card works. God damn it, I didn't plug it in! There we go. So we now have a light on this thing. I don't know why that one's on, but whatever. Switch over to the input. And there we are. All booted up in a very short amount of time. Now, Lubuntu should be good enough to just show up the SD card in the side panel there without having to do any weird Linux stuff. Ah, and it turns green. Of course. Now, why is it EX fat? Well, whatever. Let's format it to something friendlier to Apple. How about HFS Plus? Here's our SD card. And it looks like it came pre-formatted with EX fat. The iPod probably hates that with a burning passion, so let's get rid of the EX Fat Partition. Add a new one in, because it's going to ravish this drive with its Macness anyway. Uh, apparently we can't format it as HFS. I can format it as FAT32. And just does not give the option. Probably because it knows that it's on the USB bus and it just will not put HFS on the USB. So let's just make a FAT32 for now, because that's something that Mac has been able to read for quite a while. Um, and edit. Can't write because it's read-only. Say what? Well, it doesn't appear to be locked. The lock is that way, not that way, so... Let's try it again. Why is it read-only? Okay, I don't understand. Why does Linux fail me literally every single time? I'll be right back and I'll uh, just format this as... Fat32 on the other computer. Remember what happened last time I tried to do this? It only formats an EXFAT and NTFS on Windows 10. Windows 10, your ass. Where's Fat32? Well, if I want the SD card to be HFS anyway, I might as well just use Mac to... What the fuck? Might as well just use the Mac to initialize it. So there's our generic SD card here. And if Leopard is willing, ah, Mac OS Extended Journal, why don't we just do that? Erase. 
don't strain yourself, dual 1.8 G5. Okay, so now the drive is HFS. Let's eject it and pop it back into Linux to see if it can see it. At least we know the SD card works for sure now. Switching over. Removable media is inserted. Oh, look at that. Open file manager. Okay. And there it is. Doppy. And now Linux has no problem just reading HFS. How convenient. So there it is. HFS Plus. Now formatted 128 gig. The SD card. Perfect. Be sure to eject your volume. So now, the most complicated and weirdest part of this whole thing. Gotta do this. Put this in. Like that. Nothing. Well, I guess I plugged it in upside down. You can even see when I plug it in. Oh my god. That is if I didn't bend all the pins in there. Oh great, I bent one of the pins in there. Well, that's okay. I can just use another computer I have to do the same thing. Oh wait, I threw it away. That sucks. God damn it. Now it's time to straighten out the pin so I can test it again. Oh, the computer's still on. That could work. See how it turned green? See how it's not flashing? Well, it detects something, and it's 53 gigs randomly. Hmm, that's very indicative of uh, a SD card that's too big to be putting in there. Luckily, I have a 16 megabyte SD card. See, we'll see if that works. Man, no wonder nobody uses compact flash anymore. It sucks so much. Like, I'm bending the pins just by taking it in and out. I can't get it to work anymore because the pins are bent. In fact, one of the pins is probably going to fall out at this point. There's just no way. Not anymore. Luckily, it turns out I'm a frickin' hoarder. And guess what I got? One of these. So before we even try to plug this in, let's just make sure that this will line up. It looks like this one's a little bit deeper than this one. And if I plug this one into this... Oh, this one goes in upside down. Oh my Christ. Okay, it plugs in at an angle. So I have no idea if it's in there good or not. Or wait, maybe this is right side up. Who knows? So let me go plug this in and uh, see and restart the computer and see what happens. This one is a little bit weirder though. It has this kind of thing going on, which probably has the same pinout as a USB port. So uh, this is five pins wide, but only has four pins. Maybe I need to find yet another one of these. So I found another compact flash adapter. It's for PCM CIA, so uh, I have to find a whole other computer to use that in. So let's just try and figure out where this thing plugs in. I'm going on a total guess with this one. Probably fast track to frying territory. So I'm going to unplug this and just leave it empty. And then just plug in my disposable 16 megabyte card into this, whichever one's the SD card reader. Looks like it's that one. Go back. Fuck. No. Go back to Linux. Jesus. This SSD rules. It just boots up instantly. Oh, thank God. It mounted it. My 16 meg thing, it mounted it. So this is working. And if I unplug it, let it go away, it goes away. All right. I'm going to plug just the 16 meg card into the adapter to see if it can only work with lower capacity drives. Now, just to show you I'm not totally crazy here, this supports SDXC, which is, I believe, extreme capacity, which goes up and above 
128 gigs. Here is the SD card we're using in question. See how it says SDXC? Extreme capacity. Yeah, so we're using all the right stuff. And if you want to look at this one more time, Compact Flash iPod, it even has the iPod symbol for this. This thing was pretty much designed to work with an iPod with extreme capacity. Again, it says it right there. But let's just try this anyway. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And nothing on the side. Nothing in G parted. And let's go ahead and reboot. It's actually stuck on the end screen, or on the boot screen here. Generic compact flash is detected. Okay, I wish I knew that earlier. It looks like it checked over the drive itself. Some extra steps to the boot there, which is kind of weird. And for those of you who don't remember, this is a video about installing an SD card into a iPod. An iPod. So nothing's popping up on the desktop this time. Anything here? No. How about G-Parted? Nothing. So how can I trust this thing's gonna work on an iPod if I can't even get it to show up on a computer? I have no idea. So, if that's the case and it just doesn't want to work, sure, let's blame it on Linux. Linux sucks. So, we'll just use Windows instead. Okay, I got a Windows 7 installation that was actually installed on this motherboard. So, no more Linux SSD for me. Let's go straight to not knocking that over. Boot up. Fresh copy of Windows 7. That doesn't have the drivers for the GT420, but that doesn't mean it won't work. Get the hell in there. Let me guess, it'll have to install a fucking driver for it first. Well, at least that's better than not doing anything at all. It usually takes a minute to detect the compact flash. It's waiting on device 01, which is probably this. And there we are. Why is this much harder than I wanted it to be? Oh, bother. The mouse doesn't work? The mouse doesn't work. Well, the keyboard works, but the mouse does not. Well, I can do this with the keyboard. Well, at least I thought I could. My computer. The fuck? C. There it goes, all right. Oh, sweet Jesus. Which one of these is it? Where did they go? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! I was just about to select the compact flash one and they're gone! You gotta be kidding me, man. I'm... At least the mouse is working now. Holy balls. Yes, we're at home. Fuck off. Damn, this really sucks. Holy shit. Hey, where's my shit? Damn it. It, like, uninstalled the driver. Like, what am I supposed to do about that? Oops. Windows is not genuine. Shouldn't have connected it to the internet. Oh, well. <laughs> and here I thought this was going to be an easy, simple video. Boy, was I wrong. And the mouse has decided to not work again. Ask me. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Yeah, I'll just watch. It won't be able to install any goddamn drivers because it detected that it's not genuine Windows because I left it connected to the internet. Fuck it hell. Alright, let's see if it, our devices are showing up now. They are not. What the fuck? Let's take a look at Device Manager. Doesn't seem to have anything that's not connected. Here's another SD card. Well, let me try plugging that in. Hey, it works. Shit, it works. Okay, that's the removable disk F. Look at this thing, it's looking like it has buck teeth or something. So it can't detect this at all. Now in Linux and now Windows 7 with two different compact flash card adapter reader things. So let's unplug that and that should go away. 
It's gone. Okay. So let's let's plug plug this. Let's just take this out and reconfirm that it does in fact read. Oh, yep, it certainly does. So I either fucked this thing up or I didn't plug this in far enough. I never felt a real stop. It just sort of stops. I guess I'm going to try really hard to push it down. It doesn't appear to have any effect. So since we know it's not showing up in Windows any differently, let's switch back over to Linux for a sec. Switch. Hmm, I wonder if it'll get hung up on that if I have this connected. Who knows? So while that's booting, well, I remember it is the only other compact flash card that I have to test with this. Sort of see if it's just all compact flash sucks in this, like, five mile area, or it's uh, just a problem with this guy. So, uh, there's only one other compact flash card I have because, I mean, you know, compact flash is not something everybody has all the time, except for maybe photographers and shit. That's right. Remember the Power Macintosh G3 blue and white? Yeah, that's where my other one is. Oh, and I'm facing the wrong side to you. Really? You're not even gonna fall open? Talk about a bad day. All right, there she blows. Kingston Compact Flash, four gigabytes. Clearly a little bit small for our uses, but we need to test this. Fucking shit! Okay, I got it. Could we be any more crowded here? Oh my god, okay. So let's take out this and look at the comparison between this and an actual compact flash card. This is fatter than this. Let's see if I can plug this in without incident. This is HFS. Oh my fucking shit! Oh, would you look at that? It even detects that it's a Mac SSD running uh, Mac OS 9. We can even see right here all the files. There's KidPix, there's Quake. Hell, there's even the El Capitan wallpaper I wanted to put on there as a joke. So I think finally, through process of elimination, I can pretty much wager that this is dead. This is fried. This doesn't work. I don't understand why, um, but it just doesn't. And again, we can do pretty much whatever you want. You can plug this in. And it should pop up. And it does. You can have pretty much wherever you want plugged in there. Whenever you want. Get rid of it. It's gone. Same thing goes for this. Just be very careful with it. Actually, I probably do want to properly dismount this because that is a slightly different file system that I'm a little bit more concerned about. Dismount it there. Okay. So this is, in fact, an interesting compact flash experience. And then we'll put this back where it belongs in the G3. So the only thing I don't know is if this is defective or I fried it by plugging it in upside down. I suppose I really could have fried it by plugging it in upside down because it's supposed to never actually plug in like that. See how these grooves won't let it go in any other way? That's to keep idiots like me from frying it. So yeah, I don't think this works anymore. I've tested it on everything, uh, multiple operating systems, and you know, it works in Linux, it doesn't work in everything else. End of story. So we can't almost, we almost can't do this. Unless I order another one of these, which I guess I could. Um, but uh, in the meantime, though, let's see if first it works with our new battery that we got. Huh? Yeah. Let's see if it'll just work on its own uh, with this new battery. We'll use the old hard drive just fine. All right. So let's go ahead and eject this. Drive has to spin up first. And it's okay to disconnect. So let's do it. 
obviously that kills it. So, we have to use this little dealie here. It's sort of a vibration padding thing. Here's no battery. Put it on something like that. And then make sure the red wire is up. Drive is spinning up. All on its own. We'll click there. Oh my Christ. Well, at least that worked. Hey! This guy's backlight, too. I'm gonna turn that back on. Just so we know when it's on. Okay, so, I mean, we sort of half did it, I guess. But again, these are really hard, or these are really easy to work on unless you plug this in upside down. Yeah, don't know really what to do about that. And of course, to power it off, hold the play button. And it's powered off, I guess. So that works. That starts up just fine. So we got two choices now. We can buy another one of these, or we can just uh, buy a 128 gig compact flash card. Now that's probably going to be more expensive than a 128 gig SATA SSD. Do we really want to put this much money into your media player? Maybe. But then again, maybe you'll want to actually make it as big as you want. If this iPod can handle pretty much any capacity, you could keep theoretically swapping in new compact flash cards, and it would just keep working. So, uh, let's see what happens. Well, there is one more thing we can try before uh, we decide that this has been the big one. And that is, we can um, just assume for a second that this doesn't work with just a regular computer. I don't know why that would be, but let's just assume that that's the case. What if it just works with the iPod? We never tried to actually plug it in and try to get it working any other way. So let's move this out of the way. Let's uh, get that out of the way. Let's unplug the hard disk. All right, so since we know it's supposed to plug in this way, we'll plug it in like that. Plug the battery in like that. So it doesn't fucking explode on me. So after a little while, I'm assuming it should show the either sad iPod, missing folder icon, or missing drive. Like, you can actually find the drive. It should show those next. Because we know what it'll do if it doesn't have a drive in there. Or it'll actually detect the drive, but maybe it can't actually do anything with it. Either way, it should show the folder icon. Let's just let it keep sitting at that logo there. Plug this in and see if it pops up on our G5 here. Yes, it looks like it's having a lot of fun. Nope, nothing yet. Still shows that Apple logo. Is it just a matter of waiting for it for longer? I don't know. So I guess I'll wait for it to pop up until the other compact flash adapter arrives. What the hell is going on here?